Hello, welcome ham radio enthusiasts. This is my vlog number three where I talk about current events in the ham radio, my world, online community, YouTube type thing. And this is the third one and I'm going to try to do this weekly. All right, let's get right to it. This week, not a whole lot went on, so I'm going to try to keep this short. My intention last week was to do this contest right here, the SKCC Straight Key Century Club Weekend Sprintathon. By the way, that is one be quickly becoming one of my favorite clubs, the Straight Key Century Club, because the people out there really, really are good at responding to you when you call CW, uh, CQ on CW, and they seem to be very patient. It's a very patient, loving, nice community. I hate to use that word loving, but it's an easy way to get into CW, you know, and you may not even have to use a straight key. You should, but you may not even have to, to talk to these people. And they have specific frequencies for you to use. So go to SKCC and it will come right up and get an account. Um, there's a, there's a, a number that you get a sequential number. And, um, and I got in a few years ago. So anyway, go get your, uh, register for that. It's really cool. Okay, so I was going to do this contest here. Look at that SKCC Weekend Sprintathon. I was all excited about that. And on Friday night, my wife got very, very sick with the flu. The flu was going around. She couldn't, didn't get out of bed for like two days. So I had to watch the kids, and then they were all over me. And so nothing got done this weekend except occasionally I made a video. So not very much has happened. But let's continue on and talk about what I have done. All right, I made uh, two or three videos came out recently that I made this. Uh, I am I got my... I got my high end fed antenna and lots of people making good comments about it. This is in fact a coil, even though it's very, very thin. The wire inside of here apparently is very thin. So uh, this, is a, this is a loading coil and I got my antenna. It came, I made a video about it. It's right there. It's, I, it made, I got a lot of comments. It's been a nice reception on that video. Then I made this Hamlog app that I use on my phone. I found out how to record on my phone and and very soon, I'm going to release this another video called Best CW Morse Phone App. And it's the one I use to practice with when I'm walking and stuff. So watch that video when it comes out. It's coming out very soon. That's some news. Um, I figured out how to record on my phone, which is it's all it is is an app. Okay, moving on to... Uh, I just want to talk a little bit about something that I'm, I dug up. I highly recommend getting this book or one like it. Now, go look on Amazon right here and notice... The 2019 book is $50. You don't need the 2019 book, okay? Unless you're really, really crazy about the latest and greatest thing. Go ahead and go a few years back like I did. I bought this like two years ago, and I got a 2014 model, and you can get it for a lot cheaper. So look at the 2017 model, and then look at your used options you have here. You've got some used options, I'm sure. Nine used from $13. Okay, buy a used one of these. Okay, and, you know, you're not going to read this straight through. All right, but it, it, what happens is that the first few pages starts out really good, you know, like really normal, and then all of a sudden it goes straight into super hardcore technical stuff and like, like, and so fast. But anyway, there's a lot of oral books that are really good. I have, I probably got four of them. One of them is an antenna book. Anyway, I'm promoting this book. Go out and buy a used one for, oh, 15 bucks or something. It's well worth it. All right, so just for fun, I dug this book up right here. This was my very first book, which I don't think you can buy anymore, by the way. This is my first ham radio book, and I love this thing because it kind of reminds me of being a kid again when you didn't really understand radio. You know what I mean? You didn't know how it worked. It was just all mysterious. And this book right here is very, very, it's kind of cheesy. Even it's almost like a kid's book, but I love that. I actually like that because it's so simple and straightforward. And it's like an introduction, like ham and satellites and... Uh, emergencies, even kids can do it. Uh, here's a guy, you know, look at this guy with his hat on and everything, probably from 1965 or something, talking about the technician exams. It's got the band plan for whatever year this this came out, pro before digital radio, in fact. Uh, anyway, I thought this would be a nice throwback. Love this book. I would never sell it. Every now and then I kind of skim through it. All right, let's see. Look who's talking. I don't think it's out there. I did this search. I'm, you might be able to find it somewhere else. No, maybe eBay or something. Okay, I'm going to end this up because it is still winter. It's still cold outside. There's very little I can do other than at the computer. I'm an outdoors kind of guy. I, and I told you in the other video that I couldn't even raise my antenna mast up because it was frozen. It rains. Rain gets in that, that fiberglass mast and it freezes. Actually, 
I, that mass is 33 feet. I wish I had bought the bigger model now. There's like a 41 feet and a 50 foot. I wish I'd bought the bigger model. So if you're going to buy one of those, go ahead and get the bigger model because you can always... You can always go less height, but you can't always go higher, okay? So if you want one of those, go at least 40 feet. That's my recommendation. Because if I... 33 feet is not long enough for this antenna, you see? This antenna is probably... I, f I don't know exactly how long it is. But that mast is actually not long enough for it to be vertical. I would have to kind of slope it. So does that make sense? Okay, I still am not done anything with Hamvention. Um, I'm going to have to get a hotel, and I might even buy tickets. You know what? I hate buying tickets in advance because it almost guarantees something will come up and, it, and I won't go because I've had that experience before where I buy the ticket or I pay for something in advance instead of doing it there, and for sure it happens I can't go, and then that I end up with this ticket that I can't use or something. So I'm always hesitant to buy things in the future. A lot of these races like 5Ks and stuff and 10Ks and half marathons, what they do is they – they offer tickets early and then they raise the price and then they raise the price and then raise the price and then they raise it even more on on actual physical day and so many times i've tried to save money by buying it early and sure enough i'll get sick i'll get some of my wife will get sick my car will break or something and i can't go to the race and i'll end up losing the money you might want to look at tickets right now because you can buy them online cheaper so it looks like the general admission ticket is 22 dollars, and i think it's like 27 if you buy it there so it's a five dollar difference you have to be darn sure you're going, though, because there's nothing worse than buying a ticket and then you can't go. As for an event that I might be at, I haven't decided yet what to do. What I'm thinking I might do is go up here to events. So if you look at the official event schedule under here under attendees, they give you an idea of what's going on on Wednesday. I'll never be there on Wednesday. Thursday, a couple years ago, I went to Contest University. Um, it's a really good thing to go to. I, the only thing I was disappointed in was that it was all just luxury. It was lecture, lecture, lecture. There was no hands-on. There was no... I didn't feel like I came away with anything super, super practical, you know, because there's only so much you can get in a lecture. At some point, you want to see and do something. Does that make sense? The DARA Club, Clubhouse, Dayton Amateur Radio Association, every single year, they have an open house and they have tours. You can go It's you can go out to the DARA thing and they'll show you the antennas. It's, they've got a crazy setup there. They've got all kinds of antennas and buildings and, and it's very complicated and they'll t give you a tour and all. I will say it's, a, it's pretty far away. If you decide to go, your entire evening is going to be that thing, you know, in general because it takes like 15, 20 minutes to get outside of town or wherever it is to, to go there. It's really cool. It's really good to see. I made a video of it. In fact, if you type in DARA clubhouse tour you'll probably get my video from last year where i went i feel like i did a, i got enough there unless you're part of the community or something and, or just want to take a tour it's really good to go to but i won't be there this year i don't feel like i need to okay so i will be there on saturday um now they're at 6 to 8 p.m again every evening is the tour i just told you about it's really cool to go to um the contest there's dinners um i haven't decided what i want to do yet there's nothing on sunday it looks like but I might go to just like this pizza party, you know, something like that. I haven't decided exactly, but maybe me and my friend or something will go to this pizza party and just see who's there and see what it's like just for fun because we're there. Why not? Still maybe want to operate. Okay, um, I didn't even think I would get five minutes, and I'm over ten minutes. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in Dayton. Xenia. I mean Xenia. <laughs>